super good, you're going to find yourself in here somewhere, okay? So what I don't want you to do is to shrug it off, okay? We're going to talk it through. You're going to see it somewhere. This kind of covers everybody in this one, but it's super, super good, okay? Our title for this day, Jesus Strong 2021, Our Year of Freedom, Unshakable Series, Jesus. And we're coming out of, our text is coming out of uh, Matthew 14, 22 through uh, 33. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation if you're taking notes or if you have your Bible. It reads thus. 22. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that uh, his disciples get back into the boat and go across the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. The people home that he's talking about, he just fed the 5,000. And this was so awesome that they were getting ready to seize him and make him king. But it wasn't his time yet, so he had to disperse them. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell, uh, night fell while he was up there alone. Very, very important key. After all of this, Jesus went to pray. Prayer is our refuel when we're about to do something super big. I will be praying extensively for our trip going to Camp Elevate. You should be praying for not just your day, but for people in your life. You should be praying for moments that are big because it's real and it works through you. Okay? This is what Jesus was doing. He was praying because he saw something was getting ready to happen. It needed to happen. I'll explain. Meanwhile, the <laughs> Very next scripture. Meanwhile, the disciples were, were in trouble, far away from the land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. At the exact time that they needed him, he knew that they would that he would be there, or he knew that they Jesus knew that they need that they needed him, so he was there when they needed him. 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Do not be afraid, he said. Take, pay attention. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called out to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on water towards Jesus. But when he saw, when he saw the strong winds and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. And immediately, Jesus reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith. Why did you doubt me, said Jesus. When he climbed into the boat, the winds stopped and the disciples worshiped him you really are the son of God. What were they afraid of? It would seem so. It would seem so. It would seem that they were afraid of the water. But you know this is going to get deeper. So. While they were fighting, Jesus came to them. Walking. Jesus was walking on the very thing that they were afraid of. He was walking over top of the show man as an example of what he wanted them to do. They were afraid of the winds and the waves, and he was just walking on like it was nothing, like it was solid ground. He makes the things that we are afraid of solid. So Peter, when he saw it, you've got to understand, Peter is a master uh, fisherman. This is what he's done all his life. But we talked about before when, when Peter had denied Jesus three times and the rooster crowed, he felt so deep conviction because he didn't honor what he said he would do. He didn't honor Jesus at all. He denied him in front of everybody. He was not a Christian. And so with that, it was easy for him to go back to the water. It was easy for him to go out there because that's all he knew. So these winds and these waves was nothing to him. Nothing at all. He was doing this. It was the 11 that was scared. It was the 11 that had was gripped with fear. Because Peter was in there getting it. Peter was in there, come on, is this all you've got? He wasn't afraid. So even when they said, it's a ghost, that was 11. Peter was like, that's you, Lord. Bid me come and walk on the water. Jesus said, come. And he got out there. 
Peter has never been out of the boat. Peter's never been out of the boat. So instantly, as soon as he saw the winds and the waves, I'll bid you this, I'll tell you this right now. Those waves, yeah, they were trying to kill him. They were trying to kill him. They were trying to kill the hope that they had inside of them. They were trying to kill the word that Jesus had put inside of their ears and got down to the heart. It was coming immediately for the things that God had invested in them. He's doing the same thing for you. So check this out. When Jesus grabbed him, so we have such little faith. Peter was walking out of 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Peter wanted to walk by faith and not by sight. But these things overwhelmed him. <laughs> you see, when the Bible says, if you ask, you shall receive, that's happened to Peter. And what happened to Peter? He was given the same ability as Jesus. He was able to do what Jesus was doing. He was able to do what Jesus was doing. And this is the very same thing that we do. What were the others doing? They were still in the boat. When they should have been like, oh, 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 Jesus, pick me. Jesus, oh, I want to go, I want to go. Nope. Nope, there wasn't at all. They were still in the boat. They were still stuck in the boat. See, the boat, it represents our comfort. Our boat represents our safety, our security. It's where we run to when everything's going crazy. This is the reason why you still smoke weed. Because when everything's going nuts, Why you still drink? That's your. That's in your boat. What was in their boat? Fear. What's in your boat? Maybe it's anger. I know some people that stay angry. I know some people that you say something to them, they have no understanding at all. All they have is anger. All they have is get me in your face, buddy. This is in boat. This is in people's boats. Maybe it's your. Material possessions. Maybe when you're having a bad day, instead of going to pray, maybe be, 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 you have a bad day, and instead of getting to your word, you say, you know what? <laughs> I got a nice truck. You know, I got I got a bunch of friends and I got a bunch of likes, I got a bunch of followers. I'm good. This makes me feel better. This was in the boat. This is what they lean on instead of Jesus. This is how they stay in the boat instead of stepping out of faith. Maybe it's your boyfriend. Maybe it's your girlfriend. Maybe you put more emphasis on your relationship with them than your relationship with God. And you've got to do ungodly things to keep it. You staying in the boat. This is all in the boat. This is the stuff that I'm calling on. This is the stuff that Jesus is calling for us to walk out of the water. Done the right way, none of these, most of these things are not wrong, folks. Okay? Yeah. You know, maybe it's some of this stuff. It's the. Uh, oh, maybe it's some of this stuff. Maybe it's the, the FOMO. Maybe it's the fear of missing out to where instead of coming to 180, folks, now you guys are all faithful. It's the ones that are not in fact, all the missing chairs. Once that you ask, you want to come to church? They're like, nah, I'm, I'm cool. Uh, I'm all right. You still do that, man? It's the fear of missing out. Uh, I'm going to stay here, bro. No, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not about all of that. Maybe it's the foji. It's the fear of joining in. Because if I really show that I'm a Christian and I love God, they will call me soft. But if I really go down the stripes and I feed the homeless and I put my arm around and pray, I'm going to really look like a Christian. Maybe that's not what you want to do. Maybe you want to look so tough by yourself in the boat without Jesus. Because Jesus is not in that boat. He's not in that boat all selfish like he's not. Maybe it's the joy of missing out. <laughs> y'all, y'all keep going. Where? Cam. All right, bro. I'm going to be here, homeboy. Oh no, no, I'm not about that life. I feel good. I don't, I'm not, you know, I'll get to Jesus one day. I made up this one. Hopefully it goes. Uh, it really says funfy, but I'm going to call it phony. It's the fear of fitting in. 
It's the fear that if you are called a Christian, you won't fire because Simon here is faithful with his proverbs and he's posted on multiple locations and social media that if somebody over here were to be like you, faithful to the Lord, that you're going to get a reward out of the Lord. Your harvest is big, but he's doing too much. You don't take all that. I want to fit in that way. I'm going to stay here in the boat. Jesus is saying, I'm out here. I'm standing on the very things that is intimidating you. I'm standing on the very arguments that your mom and dad has. I will show you the way. I will show you how to make it. I will show you how to be conquered. More than a conqueror. I will give you a harvest. What's holding you back? Because y'all, most of y'all, some of y'all, some places, all of us, is in that boat. And Jesus is saying, step out. The things that we're naming, the cars, the attitudes, the weed, the dope, the this, the that, none of that will save you. None of that will get you to heaven. None of that will get you through. None of that will make anything better but make it worse. Hey. It'll all make it worse. None of that. You see, the boat represents our comfort. The boat represents our safe place. The boat represents the world. And the winds and the waves were coming to push us down, push Peter down into the world, out of the unshakable kingdom of Jesus Christ, into these things that are trying to kill us. Jesus is not in the boat. He's called us to walk up top of our fears, walk up top of our doubts. Because what happens when we're in the boat with all of these things, we end up saying things like, I don't know if all this is true. I don't know if Jesus is real. I don't know if God is in me. I don't know where God is when all this craziness is happening. What is he doing? But you have yet to open your Bible. You have yet to reach out. You have yet to pray consistently until you feed. Your spirit is telling you something. You, this is what we're going to have in camp. This is where we're going to come back different. You're going to shred up some past. You're going to tell some people about your God. You're going to have your anointing lit on fire. I promise you. I promise you. For I'm praying about it. I'm out of my boat. I'm stepping out on faith. I don't even care about what devil is trying to stop what. He can't do nothing to my anointing. Somebody in my life that reached out and I was like, you are what? 